I'm Scott Kamineski, General Manager for the Aerospace and Defense Industry at Infor. Over the course of my 30-year career in the enterprise software arena, I've had the opportunity to work with many A&D companies to help them achieve tangible business improvements across their operations. Here at Infor, we help our customers do this through modern, industry-specific solutions delivered in the multi-tenant cloud. Infor has a very rich history in aerospace and defense. Today, we have over 800 A&D customers across the industry, ranging from small enterprises to some of the very largest industry players. One very important reason for our success in A&D is that we recognized long ago that this is not at all a monolithic industry. In fact, the industry consists of several micro verticals, such as commercial aviation, defense aviation, defense electronics, defense maritime, ground defense, and space systems. Infor understands the special challenges in each of these micro verticals. We are unique in the market because we have built what we call last mile capabilities. In other words, our solutions are purpose built to meet your standards for government contracting and accounting, quality and cybersecurity, including the new regulations pertaining to CMMC. And all of this is true whether your company is a manufacturer, a service provider, or a combination of the two. We have two very powerful and robust solution suites that serve our A&D customers. The speakers that follow me will focus primarily on our Cloud Suite A&D solution, but we do also offer Cloud Suite Industrial. Both solutions meet the requirements for A&D and government contractors, even if you do a mix of commercial and government work. And both solutions are available in our secure cloud for regulated industries. Our teams will help you identify the right fit based on your business requirements and growth strategy. And finally, the most visible sign of our commitment to this industry can be seen through the people you will interact with. I am proud of the vast array of people talent that brings passionate dedication and deep domain expertise to help our customers realize value from our solutions. You'll find this through A&D industry focused staff across product development, solution consulting and sales, and even extending to our robust partner ecosystem. And now we'd like to show you how our commitment to aerospace and defense is leading to business and digital transformation today and into the future. For that, I'll hand off to our A&D industry strategist, Risa Sevold. So aerospace and defense has had a tumultuous year. In commercial aviation, there have been reductions in immediate capacity, deferred overhauls, and canceled orders, especially for wide-body jets. We know those long-haul flights will take longer to come back to normal. We're seeing effects in production and aftermarket service with two additional challenges. That's managing a skilled but remote workforce while ensuring the safety of workers that are still on site. There are quite a few impacts throughout the supply chain. There's been a reduction in demand for spare parts and service. The disruption of logistics and transportation networks means that parts availability and the predictability of deliveries have been more difficult to determine. We're hearing that commercial aviation related business is down about 30%, but as much as 50% in some areas or greater. Some manufacturers have been able to retool their production lines to produce medical equipment or personal protective equipment. In MRO, we're seeing some fleet owners taking the opportunity to do upgrades that they may have deferred in the past. With so much grounded aircraft with low time, there could also be an increase in used serviceable material and parts in order to cut repair costs. We should expect downstream effects of recent events. Those fewer flying hours mean less maintenance and maintenance workers are getting furloughed in some areas by as much as 50%. And we've seen this happen before in the industry, and it eventually does lead to a talent shortage. Those skilled technicians have already been in a shortage across the industry, but we're also going to see some changes in the skills mix. Some airlines are bringing back older planes in order to defer those new orders, but other airlines are focusing on the new planes because they're more fuel efficient, require less maintenance per flying hour, and they're built using new technology. The future of aviation technology is going to include 
robotics and automation, composite design, additive manufacturing, artificial intelligence, connected devices, and advanced propulsion. Space systems historically have not had much MRO, but the growth of commercial space and new technology for reusable launch systems is going to change that going forward. So these are the kinds of technologies we need to be thinking about when training and preparing a future workforce. In any industry downturn, there is an increase in M&A and private equity activity. Companies that do well in the recovery phase are typically those that are well positioned to take advantage of those early growth opportunities. So Infor has seen this scenario many times before, integrating multiple businesses and locations. And we can talk to you about some of the things to consider if you find yourself in, with an opportunity to consolidate your business processes and IT in an M&A or joint venture situation. On the other side of the industry, defense is still going strong. There's still a need for operational readiness in national security and the development of new technologies and platforms. Some of the major areas of investment include space systems, hypersonics, missile defense, and all the related subsystems and components, even 5G. The U.S. Department of Defense is ensuring the health of the defense industrial base by increasing progress payments, and much of that is flowing down through the supply chain to subcontractors. The main defense news in the U.S. is the new Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification. The Pentagon is going through an update to the DFARS defense regulations this fall, and when that is complete, the CMMC certification will become a go-no-go -no -go criteria before you'll be able to bid on new defense contracts. The CMMC requirement will flow down to suppliers in all tiers. There's no minimum revenue or size thresholds. So you may be seeing surveys from your prime contractors asking you about your plans to get certified and what your timeline is. If you have critical sole suppliers yourself, you may want to send out those surveys as well. The CMMC model framework did incorporate international input and is getting interest from other countries. So it's possible that we might see some cybersecurity standardization across the global defense industry in the future based on CMMC. Now, most of the defense industrial base is small and medium-sized businesses, and the cost of compliance might seem prohibitive, especially if you haven't focused on developing in-house cybersecurity expertise in the past. So we could see some new entrants into defense in order to diversify revenue, but we could also see some exit from the market because of the CMMC requirement. Here at Infor, we see CMMC as an important competitive differentiator for you to continue winning those defense contracts, and our approach to cloud security will help you get there. We are ready at CMMC level three today. That is the level that you'll need in order to handle ITAR controlled data. Both Cloud Suite Aerospace and Defense and Cloud Suite Industrial will meet that requirement in our AWS GovCloud environment. And we call that Infor Regulated Industries Software as a Service, or IRIS for short. So it's available to any customer that wants greater security to protect your IP or customer data. IRIS availability has been important to the AND solution roadmap along with additional investments in our core ERP functionality and integrations to other Cloud Suite applications. Even if you don't do government work, protecting your IP and increasing resilience comes down to rigorous operational security. Right now, the ability to use data to keep up with real-time changes in your business is more important than ever. It'll help you stay competitive, collaborate with your partners and customers, and respond more rapidly to market changes. So stay tuned, Arsenin is here to tell you more about the Infor solutions that will help you move forward. My name is Arsenin Rodriguez, and I'm part of the development organization as a vice president. In this section, we're gonna talk about what are some of the unique capabilities we have built in order to manage the complexity of aerospace and defense companies. Infor, as well as myself, have over 25 years of experience in the aerospace and defense market. Our solution set comprises of a multi-tenant cloud solution that actually upholds to the highest level of cybersecurity, CMMC, NIST, FedRAMP, GovCloud, and ITAR requirements. We also created capabilities in order to support the business models we need in aerospace and defense. So let's talk about those. So what have we done in our solution that is truly unique for the aerospace and defense market? As you can see on the slide, we broke them down in three categories. The first category is all about how you define a contract and how you execute the contract. So what we've done in our system 
is we added the true notion of a defense contract. That means we added the contract itself, CLINs, the contract line items, hardware and non-hardware deliverables that also consist of service activities. We can have the contract type. Is it fixed price? Is it time and material? Or is it cost plus cost reimbursement? But in the CLIN itself, we added the flow down and a DPAS. So you can see on your POs what the DPAS rating is for your suppliers. We also added the capabilities for supplier progress payments. So if your supplier is actually being paid on progress instead of, of deliveries, we can support that also. We added earned value in our project reporting, monitoring and analytics. We added a notion of allowables and non-allowables. So whenever you invoice based on cost plus, there are certain costs that are, that are invoiced. Overhead allocation and application to burden in your projects. And we added customer furnace property to manage the material you'll get from your customer to put on your solutions. The second category is all about operations. We added a unique concept called commingling. And what we do here, based on your project group, we actually net within the project group and allow transfers and commingling. Commingling means I have multiple demands from the, for the same part from different projects and I'll put them on one supply order. This means that in your operational level, you will actually see orders instead of all these project numbers. Whenever cost is added to the order, the cost will be distributed to the projects based on the quantities within the order itself. We do that on the purchase order line level, we do that in warehouse, and we do that in manufacturing. That means that your operations can be very efficient as they report time, they report material, and all of the transactions against the order, and the system is making sure the correct amounts are going to the right project cost ledges. We also add added borrow loan. So the borrow loan and payback. That means whenever a project is loaning something from your project, we make sure that we keep that transaction and the cost price for that transaction. And later on, when the material hits the original project that actually loaned something, we will pay it back at the original price. We can split the order, the production order, to make sure the cost of the order is segregated correctly for the right project accounts and also to make, ensure you have the right moving average units cost. We added costing breaks. So you can map your project structure onto your bill of material structure and the right costs are going to the right PCAs. All of these capabilities that we put in are for the aerospace and defense market to ensure that we comply to DFARS and MMES. The last section is all about what we've done in the aerospace vertical. We added capabilities in order to assemble aircrafts. Capabilities for configuration management, understanding the difference between your as designed, your as planned, and your as built, as well as your as maintained. We added COCs and first article inspections in order to comply with regulations from FAA or ESA. We added Kanban in barcoding to make your production facilities very efficient. Subcontracting with material flow. Corrective action, fracas. In order to understand where problems come from and to have action in order for them not to occur again. We also have tail number effectivity. So we can configure specifically an airplane based on its tail number and actually put in customer requirements for that airplane. Hello, I'm Edward Tellerico. I work with the product management team as an industry strategist here at Infor. I have been working here at Infor since joining in 1996. I have worked with almost all of our aerospace and defense customers and we're very pleased with the deliveries we've made for CloudSuite Aerospace and Defense so far. The entire CloudSuite Aerospace and Defense industry specific capabilities were done in co-development with some of the largest aerospace and defense companies that we have here at Infor. A large portion of the cloud suites from LN's roadmap comes from customer requests to enhance the software. Probably over one third of all of the changes made are based upon customer requests. We have delivered capabilities for the aerospace and defense industry 
like contract cost pegging, contract management, as well as the costing of transfers using the mock so that we could deliver a solution that customers would not have to modify the source code or customize the solution to meet the demanding industry requirements of aerospace and defense. Cloud Suite Aerospace and Defense, like all of Infor's Cloud Suites, is updated on a monthly basis with patches, fixes, new incorporations of technology, and uninvasive capabilities to incrementally improve the solution. And monthly, we have deliveries based upon the request from our customers for aerospace and defense capability. Recently, we have delivered finite capacity scheduling capabilities and we improved the RevRec capabilities within LN for the new guidance that was offered. These are both examples of where we're continuing to deliver new value to our customers to utilize the cloud suites. The roadmap is divided into six areas. With every drop, we attempt to improve the user experience with new dashboards, KPIs, reports, as well as 360 views and consolidated sessions. With every release, we add new integrations to Infor products, other third-party products, or new solutions that we may develop like Infor Factory Track. Those integrations are tested and certified by Infor and available so you don't have to develop them or you don't have to maintain them going forward. We also deliver additional globalization features of our cloud suites in the form of localizations, new languages, or AWS farms where we can deploy our solutions. We continue to deliver new mobile applications so you can do your work on the go and reduce the total cost of ownership of an Infor cloud suite. We also lift the technology stack by additional utilization of the Infor operating service or AWS services that allow our solutions to operate more efficiently for our customers. Lastly, and most importantly, we continue to deliver industry-specific features, last-mile capability, so customers can have everything they need for their industry. Currently, in the roadmap, we're making improvements to trade compliance. We're adding a complete process flow to the implementation accelerator for DCAA audits, assisting you to prepare for the audit, delivering cost incurred reports, and then how to make corrections from the results of the audit. We're also improving the cost allocation module and routines to be able to calculate the rates and perform retroactive rate adjustments. And most importantly, Cloud Suite Aerospace and Defense is now available in the GovCloud. For all those defense contractors in the US that have cybersecurity maturity model mandates from their customers, ITAR controlled parts under the International Trade and Arms Regulation, or simply that have a requirement in their company that their solutions follow the NIST requirements, Cloud Suite Aerospace and Defense in the GovCloud does all of that and is certified to the FedRAMP. This new deployment allows us to offer a multi-tenant solution to aerospace and defense contractors like no other company in the world. As you can see, Infor has a very, very large commitment to the aerospace and defense industry and we will continue to do so. You heard all the investments we made in our industry-focused Cloud Suite solutions. I will give you a brief overview on the investments we're making in services to help our customers realize the value and take advantage of all the innovations we're making to the product. Last year at Inforum, we launched Infor Agility with one sole purpose, provide faster time to value for our customers. I'm happy to share that we made tremendous progress in the last year. We had three key tenants when we launched Infor Agility. One, we never start a project with a clean sheet of paper. We always bring Infor's point of view for that industry to help customers get started with the project. Second, we focus on giving quicker wins or go lives to our customers, embracing agile principles versus big bang and prolongated projects. Third, Go Live is just the start of the journey with our customers, not the end. In order to make those tenants successful, we've invested in a few things. We've launched next generation implementation accelerators that comes with 
industry process models, tools, templates, methodology that goes with it, and also automated testing, task subscriptions, task services, so that our customers can quickly regression test our applications. We also created a very unique framework called 603010. This framework allows our customers to look at all the business processes that are needed to support their business, yet focus on the processes that are most critical for them. We firmly believe not all business processes are created equal. So the 603010 framework helps our customers focus on the 60% that are core that they can use out of the box or adopt out of the box, and then really focus on the 30, which is configured or tweaked, and 10 that are unique. We've successfully used this model. In fact, some of our customers were able to achieve 90% out of the box using the 60-30-10 framework. We know that Go Live is just the start of the journey, so we created managed services offerings to help our customers once they're in the cloud to continue to take the innovations we're putting into the product. In addition, we launched Info Process Intelligence, which allows our customers to measure, to monitor their business processes with their actual transactional data, and then assess the processes that they have to continue to improve, automate, and do a continuous improvement process. Finally, we've invested and trained several Infor and partner resources, and we continue to train them so that they can come and help our customers take advantage of all the investments we're making in Infor Agility. Thank you for your time. I have had the pleasure of working with almost all of Infor's aerospace and defense customers, and I can assure you that Infor is as committed to aerospace and defense as any industry that we develop software for. We have a long-standing history of doing very well with aerospace and defense customers, and we will continue to deliver new capabilities and technologies to support the aerospace and defense cloud suite and all of our cloud suites going forward.